sure to get there for the main event. Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language call. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight is the 62nd episode, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the leading alphabets. Uh, leading in a way of uh, our human understanding of how uh, someone t leads the way. You will see keep seeing the form of A, which is an animal head also, and you will also see the form of a cross, which is the Phoenician tau sign. And of course, because of the sound T, you will also see the T form, Form. And also, of course, you know, because of the animal um, uh, that the ancient used to hurt, other than the bull family and that will be bovine family, there will be the, um, the sheep, you know, and so that's the ram. And instead of the word ram, you'll have the R form as in Greek. Okay, so uh, all these four alphabet, you will keep seeing them today. And uh, I will let you see how it forms a very basic uh, human concept all through the world in the ancient world okay so I will start the um, slides okay so uh, once again this is the basket starfish that's the core right there and then um, I as I said you know uh, if we believe that we are oh, sorry there is something in the middle so just ignore this I put it there by accident okay so uh, if we believe that is a separate family tree that will usher in human hierarchy because as a human as human beings we all started at the same place at the same time has already you know a lot of the archaeologists were talking you know why is it the linguist you would never agree with that you know mode of uh, uh, understanding so I believe that we need to change that way of looking at a different family tree because we are coming out from one single core family okay so um, I will start with this slice uh, which sometimes I use it at the end to show you how I will myself from place to, to place sometimes I will go through the middle of nowhere and in a very basic way okay the form that I need you to understand is the tau sign and then when you see this this uh, it actually has a tons of different meanings you know when you understand it as a rolling form and then it actually you know play part of the wheel you know to to roll you from one uh, place to another in a cyclical form okay maybe it's a little bit difficult to understand but I will show you slowly okay okay now let's look at the symbol of leader and uh, if you are Christian you will always see this sentence appearing again and again when Jesus uh, and, and also different people were saying so the last will be the first and the first last so the ancient has a very very interesting way of uh, explaining things so uh, why is it they keep saying the last it will be the first the first will be the last so um, that also forms you know how our writing system of course you understand that this a right there and if you know Greek you will understand the word arch arch is something you know or the the, the Latin word apex. Apex is someone leading in the front, right? So um, the Phoenician system, you will see that the, at the end of the system, the 22nd alphabet will be the tau sign. And then uh, why is it that uh, when they changed to the Greek system, uh, the alpha still leads, you know, because it was the herding animal of the Bronze Age, you know, so this is a very important uh, animal form right there. Even the word animal is, lead, is led by this A, right? So why it changed from A to Omega, or well, uh, actually we should pronounce this Omega. Omega is a big circle, but look at that, there's the tiny little brick right there. So it is the understanding of the ancient Greek that you know there is a whole cycle of life but somewhere in between there is a gap that we have to cross okay it is where the tau sign you know uh, plays a part you understand that they always has a cyclical view of the world the universe and all of our life okay so from um, the next slide on you understand why this rolling tau is so important you know as the last alphabet in the in the Phoenician system before before the Greek change it to this Omega okay so um, the 
This one I will show you, you know, also uh, again and again different forms of Tao and you will understand the uh, relationship of our speech sound and how they become writing and the writing how, how become a symbol because a symbol can signify many many different things and how a, an object is actually uh, become a symbol itself in form of, of a silent speech okay so this is a t different forms of tau sign uh, of course the last one you know actually takes the uh, property form okay so but from the very very beginning you will see that the uh, in Sumerian pictograph they already have this two uh, joints together showing you it is the way just like a road okay and um, if you don't believe that we share from one single core you can uh, look at this Chinese writing this is an ancient Chinese oracle writing and then uh, you will also see that it is where two row two ways meet and this is the, the how the Chinese express the walking and also the way okay so um, we have also different writing as you can see you can uh, see this little animal right there later on in the west you will recognize as the a form okay but for chinese we understood uh, understood it as the food and also we understood it as an unseen energy of course about movement okay so it has the sound of to to is actually also means the way and another way we say the the way the road is also do you will see that all oh, either to or do is actually the same uh, right the same sound but mutated between the t and the d okay and of course you know the tao and the tao as you understand the, the taoism for taoism we uh, we always explain it as the way and also uh, in christianity you have jesus christ saying that he's the odos and he's the road okay the do also is uh, similar to all this sound okay so only grammar make us feel that we speak differently but the core word sound is always very very similar since the very beginning the earlier we go the similar the sounds were okay so and then the uh, sound actually changed you know imagine the ancient world people actually don't depend on writing it is the sounds that make sense and it's it's also the context that makes sense okay so either the way slowly it become you know since it is a way you have to follow so it be become you know the un the meaning of the rule the law the custom that a, a, a race or a, or a, a group has to follow okay so the chinese also use this do either uh, i mean the physical road or actually is the taoism it also means the rule the law and the custom and of course you know in in, in judaism you have torah okay i have already explained you know two weeks ago this is two parts of the word actually it's a compound word the to is actually the same part you know explaining it is the way to, that for the Jewish people to follow okay so the Chinese also use to is the same sound you know that means the leader this will be the leader of the way and exactly the way the Christian understood the, the uh, uh, Jesus Christ okay that's why Jesus Christ is always described as carrying the cross actually he's carrying this symbol of the leader with him and then of course, if you are Orthodox, you know, Christian, you will always see the bishop staff. Uh, when he carries this T form, he's actually putting the writing in the form of a real object to show you that he's leading you the way. This is also a symbol of the leader, okay? So the, the, the boundary between the sound and the writing and the object is actually very, very blur, okay? So um, again, because of a leader, you have to know that you have to follow a direction of the way. Even this word direct actually comes, you know, with the uh, Jewish word direct and also also Tarek in, uh, in Arabic okay and in both these two words in both the Judaism and also uh, Islam it also explained as the way that you have to follow to go to God or to Allah okay so the, the 
direct direct is also you know uh, share with this direct okay so you have to follow the direction and then once again because of the joining of the the uh, two uh, lines it also makes the pivot and it also makes the north and south direction right there um, the word you know cardo in latin actually means the thoroughfare of the north and south pointing uh, main thoroughfare in a in a Latin town okay so you can see that this word right there is also shows the cardo exactly the Chinese would say gai do okay gai do for us in Cantonese is also means the road or the way okay so the, from cardo you actually get the cardinal points you know the the English word and also from this cross right there if you imagine it moving uh, bridging up that little gap of the old Omega, the big cycle, it means, you know, it actually coincides with the Bible story of the passing over or the crossing over in the pagan world. Crossing over, you, um, a lot of ancient uh, religion or ancient pagan religion always believe that when we died, we always have to cross a river to the other rim. So this is exactly also a, an idea of the crossover, okay? You will see that today I'm going to explain it slowly bit by bit. This is in a slide to show you what I'm going to touch about today, okay? And then the other thing is the crossing. You see, even when you write crossing, you also use this tau sign right there. And it is also, if you cannot walk across, you of course, you have to take a boat to cross. But interestingly, 3,000 something years ago, the Chinese has a word showing a boat. It, the sound of it is do, okay? A sound uh, that comes by, uh, we from the do sound, we also mutated into do or do. It still means a small crossing ferry, okay? And then uh, at the end, I will also touch upon the idea of escape, okay? So exactly as the Bible story, you know, to escape from the, the Pharaoh, to escape from Egypt, and the Chinese that has a very interesting uh, um, oracle bone word. Look at this. This is the sign, one of the part of the road, and then this is a river right there. Interestingly, it's drawing a lot of this Tao sign right there, and the sound in, in Cantonese is also tall. To is actually means to escape. You can see that the people or the, the idea of rolling over from one side of the bank to the other bank. Okay, so interestingly, uh, east and west we are all sharing the same sound, the same idea. Okay, so the next slide I will carry on. And this is a very complicated slide, bear with me, and because I'm comparing four different uh, uh, languages. The first one will be Sumerian, the second one will be Chinese oracle bones, the third will be Phoenician, the fourth will be Egyptian hieroglyph, the fifth one will be Greek, okay? And according to uh, the Western linguists, this should be different families, trees, right? But I will show you how similar they are from the very beginning. First of all, uh, in ancient Sumerian, they always use the a horn bull or a sign like this to mean something viral, so, uh, something macho or some unseen energy or, or something alive. And now look at Chinese. Chinese is the same. We use this sign to show some unseen energy and sometimes they change into a, a foot form and we understand as the agent of movement, the foot too, okay? And then you go to the west now and then you have Phoenician right here and this is what gradually become your A symbol this is the leader of the alphabetic cycle okay so of course it came from the animal itself you know and then the fourth one is the hieroglyph and the hieroglyph you know they draw the uh, the, the animal out right there of course you can say that whoa no it doesn't sound as A it sounds as Ka but Ka in ancient Egyptian actually also means the soul that means the ancient always used this little bull the spark right there to means the soul the agent of movement and the little spark that gives you life okay so basically they are the same thing and the fifth one of course you know will be in Greek and and of course you will start to understand it as the alpha and of course the alpha is also the ahos and now you have to understand also this al form in Greek too okay a and the al is constantly you know representing the head okay ahos in Greek is actually 
the English arch, you know, archbishop, everything arch, you know, is to, to the leader, the first one, okay? And of course, you know, when you, uh, when I take out, an, uh, when I bring out a Latin word, you can understand it as anima. Anima is like the alma, also we start with an A, the soul, okay? This is how the ancient, you know, somehow used to express, you know, the beginning of something, some life, okay? So it is same, basically the A sound, okay? And then, um, interestingly, there's a lot of food also appearing there. In ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, they also use it to mean a lot of movement, a walking, and also a male, a man. Um, as time went by, they also have a, a more complicated form, and you will see that the food actually has a little bit, has a little thing right there. It's uh, the way of showing it is a thing, is a thought, a thinking, a conscious uh, agent that um, the the foot can think and so they can move, okay? So there is an, a Sumerian sign, uh, pictograph like this, and later it become this. This is also become a very macho writing. It means the, the energy and also it means the uh, uh, anything male, okay? So you will see that I will show you a Chinese symbol also. You can see that they are almost identical. For the Chinese, and we also use it to mean the food, and we also flip it upside down uh, th th this way and that way to express ourselves. The sound is very interesting. We have the R uh, sound, which is the A, you can understand. We have the PAT sound, you can understand as the pedestrian, the pet, the foot. We have the SO sound, which you can also use it to compare with the uh, Hebrew word shok, which is also the food, okay? So we seem to have conserved, you know, all three sounds from different direction. And then um, in in Sumerian, they also use this bull like this to mean a circular motion. Exactly, the Chinese will use the same thing to mean a circular motion. You will see that uh, also this A sign is also appear again and again in both, you know, uh, culture. And then, um, I will show you this R form in ancient uh, Phoenician, okay? This R form, as I said, other than coming from a human head, it's also especially the, 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 the small letter, okay? The way to write the R is to curve it like this, okay? It's like a P form, you say, okay? So it's actually the, come from the idea of the head, okay? And so you have to pay a little bit of attention to the R sound as well, which has connection with the, with the head. And then uh, I will show you an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. Interestingly, is the foot. Look at that. The foot, the foot, the foot. Okay. And the head, the head. Okay. And then the foot actually also carry the R sound or the foot also carry the P sound in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. So you will see that the ancient actually throw things forward and backward. It's a little bit confusing, but if you when you try to see the similarity, you will find a lot of similarity, okay? And then um, the Egyptian hieroglyph have this pat sound, and then the Chinese gradually change it into this form until this day, you know, we still follow this writing, we still follow, pronounce it as pat, and we still understand part of the meaning as the food, okay? So the ancient meaning is still there, okay? So the uh, Egypt, I mean the Greek adopted this R form, and this is the R form. That's why the R and the P is always so confusing for the English speaker, because from the ancient time, the R and the P is already very very mixed even in the meaning itself okay as like you can understand it other than the food the word raja and the hebrew word rash and the and the arabic word uh reese and, and I mean the the Arabic word uh, resh and the uh, Hebrew word ras is also mean the head. Okay, that um, to uh, the Hindi system you will understand it is raja. It's all meaning the the head. Okay, either the head and the foot, the foot and the head constantly. Okay, now we look at the last word in the ancient Phoenician. As I said, it's the tau sign, and from that time on they become very highly conceptualized. You can. Understand 
understand it, you know, it's circling around to bring you back to the A right there. So from then on, the alphabetic system is already a cycle right there. But of course, you can understand this as that way, and you can understand also the Phoenician, uh, the Sumerian understand it as a circular motion too. Okay, so but the Tao's form, the Tao form in ancient Phoenician become the real real T form in the Greek form, okay? And then you can turn it that way because uh, if you pay attention, all the things that you have to turn takes a form like that, okay? Or it can take a form like that. It can turn this way or it can turn that way. So the X is actually very versatile. But in ancient and Greek, it already separated the form, the sound T for this form, and this form is actually adopted the H sound, which correspond to the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, because both of them are turning this way, okay? And you can imagine it as a, cent as a center of an axis. That's why axis is spelled with A X I S because they use all forms to exp express visually what they wanted to say okay so so I will show you this form right there if you're Christian you're very familiar from then on they are very openly saying that you know uh, Jesus keeps saying I'm Alpha I'm Omega so why is it you know they have to use different forms because they have to make two types of people understand uh, people who understand ancient Phoenician, people start to understand the new Greek, they actually compromise with two groups of people. And as you can understand, you know, for them, as Hato means the end. That's why, you know, they still carry on the Phoenician meaning. But look at this, the P form actually points to the R, you know, original R form of the ancient Phoenician, which is the head. And then the X form actually goes back or to or the original N form of the Phoenician so either you are Phoenician or you are Greek if you look at this symbol you understand it very well okay and then um, this is the 22nd alphabet this is the Greek 22nd alphabet the Greek the Greeks add two more alphabet. The 23rd will be this one. And as I showed you a couple of weeks ago, this is actually air coming out from the mouth. And that's why you have the, the word psyche. Psyche actually become your English word psyche, which is the soul, which is the air coming out. This is um, actually the uh, Greek alphabet but shows the uh, cosmology of a uh, view cosmol cosmic view of the ancient Greeks because they understand that when the end comes when you breathe out the last breath then that will be the end of the big cycle but then the big cycle comes you know the, the 22nd alphabet like this the 23rd and 24th alphabet which is the last one so after the the soul comes out there will be the final hour. So this omega is used in this very important word aura. Aura is how you understand the hour. The, but they, but when the Greek use the hour, it doesn't mean any hour of the English meaning. Okay, it means the final, final hour, the judgment moment, the judgment hour. Okay, so. That's why if you compare it to the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, you can see the similarity of the cosmic view of the people. And uh, for the ancient Egyptians, you know, they understand that as the, uh, this, the circuit of the sun, okay? So, but there is no brick right there. And you will see that the difference is there is a brick right there. And that's why the ancient Egyptian also used this even elongated to protect the Pharaoh's name. They believe that by extension of this time, cycle they actually protect the air the, the pharaoh to live even longer longevity okay so let's go back to the greek and then uh, how about this uh, little circle right there that's how, where the tau sign comes in handy they actually need someone to roll over from this end to the other end who will be that person of course that will be the crystals okay as you can see the crystal is actually make up of the sign of this tau which actually roll you over and the wreath which is actually means the head and he's actually the last one but the head to bring you over and that's why 
you know the Orthodox Church always have this um, this picture, the icon, do you know, to show their believers. In, remember that the ancient do not read, but they read pictures. Okay, okay, so. That's how they believe that Jesus comes at the end to bring them, roll them over from one end of life to the other end, okay? And but where they are going, and but you can compare this. And this is the Egyptian, the, the Greek symbol, and this is a Chinese symbol. In Chinese, this is also means the last number. And interestingly, there's the similar sign, but for the ancient Sumerian, this means the the father, the foremost, the first, and the chief. Okay, so interestingly, we actually use it in a very similar way, but as a, a, as the chronology, this one is the first, this one is the last. But if you look at Jesus Christ, of course, he's the chief, he's the he's the uh, the the first and foremost. So you will see that the meaning actually carries on. Okay, let's also look at this. You know, they were playing a lot of games. The ra, as I said, always means the the the, the head. But the uh, Greek word aura actually means the tail. Pay attention to the T again. Okay, the teleo in, in Greek actually means the tail. And the T is always somehow lingering, you know, the idea at the end. But the end is always the, the first one too. And what, what is at the end? Ura is the tail, but Uranos in Greek actually means the heaven. Of course, everybody wants to go over from this gap to the other gap, uh, brought by Jesus into heaven, the other rim. Okay, so, but uh, if I uh, show you the pagan world not talking about the Christian world that's why you see the ancient Greek jewelry they always have a uh, bagel uh, I mean bangles like this and either it's two head or they have a big snake you know eating up its tail showing the cyclical world okay and then um, of course the word is also following this the the, the euro boroughs okay but in Greek of course it follow this the same system of word but I will also show you you know Know, when it comes to the Roman, they also adopted the same idea, and now everything become macho. The, all the god will become uh, male, and then you will see that they look at two ends from the first at the beginning. The beginning is the end, so it become the genus become your name January. Okay, so. Uh, what I'm trying to say is not one race can advance well on its own and human being cannot progress without interchanges of ideas. I had actually prepared a lot more slides but I won't be able to finish it so I will stop here but um, next week I will continue. I will show you how you know the ancient belief the beginning is the end, the end of the beginning that forms a lot of our belief in life. Thank you very much.